Hello guys, this is the first part of connecting our Angular project to the backend. So after this video, we're going to have a backend folder that has everything about the backend project. In this part, we will only add the APIs to the backend project. And in the next part, we're going to use them inside the frontend on the food service. So watch this video to the end if you like to know how. Okay, here is the roadmap for this lesson. The first thing that we want to do here is creating the backend folder so we can put all of our backend stuff inside it. Go to the explorer. If you have a very long open folders, you can click here to collapse everything. And in this empty area, you can click on new folder, then write backend. And here we go. Since we are using Node.js as the backend of our website, we need to add the npm package to it. For doing this, we need to initialize the npm inside the backend folder. So go to the terminal menu and select new terminal. First of all, we need to go to the backend folder. Then we need to write npm init dash y to initialize the node package manager inside this folder with all default values. After doing this, if you go to the backend folder, you will see a package.json inside it. By having the package.json here, we can install npm packages inside this project. The first package that we want to install is TypeScript because we want to create our node application using TypeScript. So from the view, select terminal, then write npm install TypeScript, then press enter. Wait for it to be installed. After it's finished, if you look at the package.json, you will see a new entry with the name of dependencies. And if you look at here, you will see the TypeScript, the package that we installed seconds ago. And we have two extra items here, package-log.json that will lock the versions of installed packages. And we have node modules that all the packages will be installed inside this folder. Now that we have our TypeScript, it is time to configure it. For doing this, we need to create a tsconfig file inside the backend folder. So right click on the backend folder and click on new file, then write tsconfig.json. And as its name says, it is a config for TypeScript. Close the explorer. Inside the tsconfig.json, copy these configs that you can find from the comment link in the description below. They are one-time config and it's not necessary for you to know them. But if you are curious enough to know them, you can hover over their names and click on the link provided. But we have two things here that you need to know about. The output directory and the include option. The output directory is where the built JavaScript files will be put inside it. So here is the built folder inside the backend folder. And by writing this, we're telling that all the TypeScript files inside the SRC folder should be set Select to be transpiled into JavaScript. So we need an SRC folder here. Let's add it to the backend folder. Open up the explorer and right click on the backend and select new folder and write SRC. Our tsconfig is fine. Now let's go to the next step that is creating the git ignore file. You may ask why we need a git ignore. It is because we have some files and folders that we don't want to be pushed to the git. So they need to be ignored. If you open up the source control, you will see most of the data that we can see here are coming from the node modules. And the data inside the node modules shouldn't be pushed to the git. So go to the explorer, right click on the backend and select new file. Then write dot git ignore and press enter. Inside the git ignore, write node underline modules. And remember, it should be with exactly the same spell as this node modules here. Save it and you will see inside the source control, we have only five files. So all the data inside the node modules are ignored. Perfect, close the git ignore, close the source control and let's go for the next step that is copying the data.ts into backend slash src. Open up the explorer, then from the frontend folder, src, copy the data.ts and paste it inside the src folder of the backend. Since we don't have the food and tag model on the backend side, we're going to have errors. I don't want to copy the food and tag model to the backend because they need to be defined a little bit different inside the backend. So for now, just delete the imports and change the food array to any array and the tag array to any array too. Okay, now we have sample tags and sample foods on the backend side. Let's go to the next step. That is installing the express and course to the backend. From the view menu, select terminal and write npm install express space course. Press enter. Okay, let's close the terminal and check the package JSON inside the backend. 
Here we go, we have course and express installed inside the dependencies. It's time for the next step that is creating our server.ts file. Let's go to the src folder on the backend, right click on it and select new file. Then write server.ts and press enter. Here, first of all, we need to import the express because we need it to create our web application. Write import express from express. But we have an error here. The error says that I cannot find the declaration file for module express. It is because we didn't install the types slash express. So we need to use the type definition of pure JavaScript packages to be able to use them inside a TypeScript file. For installing them, you can click on the express and press control dot and select install at sign type slash express. And in the background, the type of express will be installed inside current project. So as you can see, the error is gone. Now, if you look at package.json inside the dev dependencies that will be used only for development, we have types slash express. In future, we will going to have a lot of types inside this project. So let's close the package.json and close the explorer and come back to the server.ts. Next thing that I want to import here is course. So import course from course. As you can see, we have the same error here. Press control dot, select install types slash course. Now that we have our express, let's create the web application. You just need to create a constant from the application that is equal to calling express. So now this app is an express application and we are going to define all of our APIs using this application. But there we have a problem. On the development time, we are serving our Angular project on localhost 4200. But we need to serve our backend on a different address, for example, 5000. By default, it is unacceptable to have a request from an address to a different address. That's the reason that we need course here. We need course only for development time. So write app.use course with an object that its credential is equal to true and its origin is equal to an array and inside it we have http colon slash slash localhost colon 4200. By writing this, we are telling, hey, express use course. So 4200 could have a request on this server and the credentials should be sent to. Now that the course is added to our express application, we can define our first API. We need to define an API with get HTTP method so write app.get, its address should be slash API slash foods, and it needs a handler to handle this request. Normally, it has two input parameters, request and response, and the body of the function. As the response of this API, I want to write response.send hello world. But this is not enough. We need to listen to a port. Let's define a constant for the port. Const port is equal to 5000. And we need to say app.listen to this port and we can pass a function to it. So this function will be called when the listening process is finished. So we can send the log message, console.log, website served on http colon slash slash localhost colon plus port. So it will be website served on localhost 5000. At this time, if it was a JS application, we could write node server.js inside the terminal and run our application. But since it is a TypeScript application, First, we need to convert it into JavaScript. For doing this, we need a package called tsnode. So open up the terminal from view terminal. Here, make sure that you are inside the backend folder. Then write npm install ts-node dash dash save dash dev to install the tsnode as a dev dependency inside the package.json. There is another package with the name of nodemon that could increase the speed of development. So let's install it to npm install nodemon dash dash save dash dev. Here we go. Now, if we go to the explorer and package.json, we could be able to see nodemon and tsnode here. Now we need to add a start script inside the package.json and use nodemon inside it. Nodemon will automatically use tsnode if we give it a ts file. So let's scroll up inside the scripts, press enter, write a start, and for its value, write cdsrc for going to the src folder, and put double and here to run another command after this command. And that command is nodeman server.ts. Now we can go to the terminal, view terminal, and write npm start and press enter to run our server. As you can see, we have our console log here. If we hold control down and click on it, 
it will move us to the browser. As you can see, we have an error here. It says cannot get a slash. It is normal because we didn't define any API for the root that is a slash. We just defined an API for slash API slash foods. If you press enter, you could see the hello world here. At the next step, instead of this hello world, we want to load all the sample foods. It's so simple. Let's just get back to the code inside the server.ts, remove this hello world, and write sample underline foods. It will be automatically imported from the data.ts. Now, if we look at to the browser and refresh the page, we could be able to see the foods in JSON format. But normally you will see it like this. That is not very beautiful. But if you install JSON formatter extension on your Chrome, you will be able to click on this parse button to see the data in a beautiful and formatted way. But this is not the only API that we need to implement. We need to go to the food service on the front end side and implement all the methods that are available here. We implemented the get all one, but we need to implement the other ones. Let us start by get all foods by search term. Go to the server.ts file and add another API by writing app.get slash API slash foods slash search slash colon search term. So this is the address of the API and this is the road parameter. We can get it inside this function. Quest, response, and the body of the function, you can say const search term is equal to request.params.search term. So we just get the search term from the request parameter, just like how we did on the client side. And now we can go to the food service and copy everything after a return inside search method. Then write const foods are equal to this, but here we don't have this that get all. Instead of this, we need to write sample foods. Now we have our filtered food on the server. We just need to send it to the client by writing response.send foods. Now we can copy this address and go to the browser and paste it after 5000. We could write a search term, for example, meat here and press enter. It will find the meatball for us. So it works. Let's go add the next API inside the food service. We have get all tags. We just need to go to the server.ts. And after this, we need to add another one with the address of slash API slash foods slash tags. And with the handler that sends response.send sample tags to the user. Copy this address and put it here. Press enter. We have all the tags. Isn't it perfect? <laughs> yeah. Okay. For now, all the values are static, but in future lessons, we're going to be connected to the MongoDB and get all the data from a real database. But for now, let's add the next API. Inside the food service, it is getting all the foods by their tags. Inside the server.ts, add another API, app.get, with the address of slash API, slash foods, slash tag, slash tag name, that is the road parameter, then add the handler, request, response, and the body gets a tag name from the road parameter request.params.tagname and go inside the service and copy this.getall.filter to the end. Then go to the server.ts and write const foods equal to this. Instead of this.getall, write sample foods just like before. And instead of the tag, our constant name is tag name. So use tag name. Now return the foods using response.send to the client. Pretty nice. Let's test it. Copy this part and get back to the browser, paste it here and replace the tag name with something that is available in this list. For example, launch and press enter. As you can see, we are only seeing the foods that have launch inside their tags. So it works pretty nice. Let's go for the last API that will be used for getting the food based on its ID that we will use it for the food page. Scroll down and write app.get double quotes slash API slash food slash food ID and the handler request response and the body of the handler. Let's get the food ID from the parameters const food ID equal to request dot params dot food ID. And let's go to the food service and inside the get food by ID method, select from this dot get all to the double question mark, copy it. And here create another const with the name of food and put it here. Once again, change this dot get all to sample foods. And here we go. Let's send it to the client response dot send food. Copy this part inside the browser, paste it here. 
change column food ID with an ID, if you can say three, okay? We have the hamburger here, so it works. Okay, we have all the food APIs that we want to serve to the client. This was the part one of connecting our Angular project to the backend. In the next step, we're going to use these APIs inside the food service and all the components that use them. You've been watching Code with Nasir, and I hope to see you next time.